just what I needed, guys. Oh my gosh, what a... <laughs> Get you caught up here real quick, and then, it, and then you'll understand why I kind of just booked it to Arkansas. I'll let you know, hi Opie, I'll let you know right now, the cost of this one, lakefront camping, free 99 free 99 I believe I am the only one here on the entire lake camping. There were some fishermen when we first came in on the closest side, but I guess there's no fish on this side of the lake because we've got the whole thing to ourselves. Guess what, guys? Went to Livingston. <laughs> I filmed a bunch, but anyway, I'm not going to show all that. But I did wear a nice button-up shirt, and I got a Starbucks coffee to start my day off right, trying to look all fresh. The uh, RV and the motorcycle both passed their inspections. I went to the tax collector's office. Little bit of a hiccup in there, not the end of the world. I was able to take care of the extra things they needed, which is why last time I said, tell me what else I need, and then stop telling me every time I come back for something else new that you could have told me before. Anyways, well, that's a plate, guys. And not only that, but I now get to transfer my Texas RV Nomad plates from my Miranda, my Class A, my Tioga Class C, and now the third RV. My Bigfoot has the custom plates. I know you could just be saying, Eric, you just put those plates on there and you didn't really get it registered. <laughs> oh, the coveted registered sticker, inspected, verified insurance, good till March of next year, isn't it? April? Oh yeah, they always go back one month when you register it. So we only really got 11 months, but yeah. Got the uh, rear plate put on as well. Yeah, the only bummer part for me is that it just, it cost way more than I was expecting. Uh, Cause it's a dealer in Oregon. They didn't collect any sales tax up there. So holy cow, she gave me a number. She, after everything was approved and she said, all right, that'll be $3,182. <laughs> Wait, what? What? <laughs> what? How did we get up into the thousands to register my RV? The state sales tax, Polk County tax, uh, the city of Livingston tax, uh, fees for being three months late on my registration. Uh, <laughs> not like that was my fault, but yeah, I'm like, hold on a minute, because uh, it's the middle of the month. I had to pull out my Wells Fargo app. Guys, contrary to what you may have heard, I'm not a millionaire. <laughs> I had about $185 left in my account. Enough gas, <laughs> enough gas to get right here to this spot right now. <laughs> so I just wanted to get here, uh, but not gonna solve all of my problems just sitting here parked for two weeks, right? So um, gonna have to gonna have to get creative if, if we wanna keep traveling north. I'm trying to escape the heat. I'm kinda tired of the, the humidity and the 90 plus degrees. Uh, but this is a beautiful green spot here in Arkansas. Arkansas, yeah. Oh, hey, somebody has had a campfire here before. Right on the beach. Nice. By the way, already plugged in my connecting internet, even out here in this remote area. I'm getting something. The cool thing about connecting is just so simple. You just plug it in, you turn it on. It, it doesn't have a SIM card, you know, it doesn't have a card at all. You're not stuck to a carrier. You park here, you give it five, ten minutes, and all of a sudden it says, okay, we're going to give you Verizon. Or, okay, actually, at and stronger. It'll pick whichever network tower is closer to you. There's no work. I just go grab a beer, sit out here talk to you by the time I get back in I've got connected internet to upload all these videos it's so nice on the road so much easier than some of those bulky alternatives where you got to carry a bunch of gear and set it up outside every time you want to use it you know what I mean so check out the video description below for unlimited high speed on the road internet that works really well see those two trees over there in the water do you call the roots cypress something I think cypress roots oh, it reminds me of Louisiana Florida but not up here in the Midwest in Arkansas. I don't know. I'm just glad it's over with, guys. At least for another year. And then, as, as you guys remember, Texas is doing away with those vehicle inspections. Unless you do what I just did again and bring an RV from out of state, then you have to get an initial inspection. But for me, moving forward, the car, the trailer, the motorcycle, and the RV, we can do it all by mail, whether we're in Texas when it expires or not. Um, so, we're, we're past it. We're good. Uh, 
started to get some crazy ideas of where the channel might go if this RV couldn't get registered and it would have to come off the road. I had to, uh, starting to think that things could drastically change on this channel and I'm glad I'm here where I'm at, so. Hi, Opie. Oh, Tara's in there too. Also, you'll notice I want to point out a couple things. My steps, magically working again. All I did, all I did was I grabbed a piece of metal and I started hitting the spot right here where the, where the magnet is right there to bring them in and out. And then I got a square bit and I screwed this plate down farther. I think this plate was sticking up too much and creating some metal fragments that was tricking it into thinking it's time to be closed because the door's closed when the door was wide open. It was pushing up too close to where that magnet was at. So for right now, they're working. I'm gonna keep them greased. Although uh, I did actually order an, a separate step for outside just in case it happens again. In the meantime, if, if I don't need it, I'll use it for the trailer step instead. So couple other things. I didn't spend a night at Livingston at the Rainbows Park there as part of my club membership. I just, I left that same day I got the registration done. I didn't even spend one night. I did stop by and pick up my packages and my mail at the mail center, but I uh, got a bunch of parts and some projects for the future and I are, I got the new spark plug. It's the $10 champion spark plug that was that went into these Onan generators brand new. Wayne when Wayne was kind of thinking that was going to be the magic thing. No, same thing. It'll idle fine. It idles perfectly. I idled it for 20 minutes and then as soon as I plugged in my RV cord into the generator and put a 9.7 amp load on it, which is the minimum, the bare minimum that you can pull out of a 30 amp generator, 9.7 instantly it just bogs down and dies. And again, error code 36, which Onan describes as generator shut off for unknown reasons. Well, there definitely is a reason because as soon as you put a load on it, it goes out. So again, once again, stepping away from the Onan for a little bit. However, the solar system that stopped working on the trailer here that's connected to a third charge controller inside the RV, that happened during the NASCAR races. I fixed it. You see over here, this is the solar wire coming in to the third charge controller that's on the other side. Wayne put this together. These are Anderson clips. Well, I noticed, when, I'm not going to undo it right now because I have it taped up. I noticed that it was very corroded in here. You can see rust on this. Very corroded after just three weeks on those metal contacts. And if we take a step back, I mean, you got to think all the rain we had just pouring down the back of the RV and all over this. So I think it was a bad idea to mount it in this exact position, but I replaced this gray connector, this one here, um, and plugged it in, taped it up last night, all of a sudden woke up today, and it works again. So 750 watts of solar there, 2000 watts there. We have a full capacity in the heart of summer when the sun's way up there and we're bulk charging to have 2750 watts of solar. Right now, the highest I've seen combined with all three charge controllers is 1,820 watts so far in April. But that number will continue to creep higher. I'll be so excited when we finally go over 2,000 watts from the sun at one time while we're running the air conditioner with a soft start on only 1,250 watts. Pretty cool. And the rest of the repairs and stuff and modifications that I'm gonna be working on in the next couple weeks, we're gonna do at a future location. For right now, I just wanna spend some time, relax, drink a barley pop, and celebrate getting the RV registered. That should not have been that difficult, to be honest with you, but <laughs> I don't know. Hi, Ope Dope. Hi, baby boy. What do you think of our view outside of the water? It's been a while, Tara. We have, I know, we haven't had a water view in quite some time. I'm worried about Skeeters though. It is definitely Skeeter season. We may not turn on any outdoor green lights or even interior lights because I don't want them sneaking through part of the screen, right kitties? You just eat them like they're little snacks, huh? You probably would. We're not eating Skeeters though. I don't even want them inside, okay? Okay. We're pretty much keeping the RV comfortable inside here right now as, as I look at the thermometer it does say 79 okay that's a little warmer ideally than you'd like but again we're not in an RV park parked next side by side by side by side in tiny little RV sites 
We're here with this view outside my window of a lake and no neighbors and no human soul anywhere within earshot, which is awesome. I'm very thankful for this solar system and we've got a pretty good system for staying comfortable enough in here, you know. Opie's checking out my editing suite here, but I use my little Ryobi fan and I no longer use the uh, batteries because I found out that since I have this enormous 1000 amp hour lithium storage, I can just plug an extension cord into the back of it and that is plugged in underneath and then when I go to bed I unplug that and right here in bed I have another extension cord to plug it into and an iPhone charger. And I don't know about y'all but we're not even in summer yet but in the summer months growing up as a kid even up in the Pacific Northwest I can't sleep without a fan in my face and so even now in April when it's warm the, the lows overnight are between 70 and 74 degrees those are the those are the lows so it's still warm outside and keeping these windows open gives me some crosswind inside here as well as I keep that going blowing it's right now it's blowing air out in the daytime so pulling from the windows blowing out to the highest spots on all three of these and then at night I turn off the bathroom one I leave these two on blowing air in until I wake up in the morning and like I said I've got that fan blowing right on my face all night it's so comfortable it's game changer for RV life somebody just went whizzing by outside holy cow but hey since we're poor and broke now I'm kidding. We're poor and broke because we've paid all of our bills and I don't have to worry about anything except for the fact that my bank account's a little low. <laughs> so uh, why don't we make dinner? As a matter of fact, I get a lot of compliments when I make my top ramen soup. And I know what you're thinking. We've all been there. Uh, but I make, a, I make a mean top ramen soup that is very unique. And I wanna show you real quick how I do that and maybe you could try it yourself. Next time you make a uh, top ramen soup, it won't be all soupy and liquidy. It'll be delicious and creamy. All right, bear with me guys. I promise I'll make this quick and it'll all make sense. Here's what I use. A packet of beef top ramen, a packet of chicken top, oh, that's Maruchin ramen. Huh, <laughs> didn't even realize that. Chicken and beef, flip them upside down. Grab my Maglite flashlight and beat the heck out of them. Okay, I'm gonna get some water boiling. I'm gonna show you what else we're gonna need. Some cheese, a Nathan's hot dog, and one egg. <laughs> Bear with me, guys. I'm gonna start this far burner up here on high. I'm gonna boil some water. I do not measure water. It doesn't matter how much water you boil. You just need enough water in there to hold at least two bags of top ramen with some room to stir. That's all that matters. All right, now this is boiling. I'm gonna add those two packets of soup. I like mixing it up. You might as well because you get two different flavors mixed in. You get the beef and the chicken pouches. So I already took the pouches out. We'll put the chicken in there. We'll put the beef in there. And uh, I will wait for this to get back up to boiling. And then I will cook it for five minutes. Not three minutes after you pour it in, but five minutes after it starts to reboil. Just letting you know how I do it here. Okay, it's boiling again. Start my five minute timer right now. In the meantime, while that's cooking, I'm gonna cut up this hot dog into little thin slices. Okay, and then after four minutes, the last minute, I'm gonna put the hot dog slices in there and stir those in there. One more minute and then we're gonna, we're gonna strain almost all the water out of this. Got this little hand strainer. It's a small strainer. I'm gonna put it over the sink and I'm gonna get most of the water out of that pot. Most of it so that you can't even see any water in there left. All right, hang tight. Let me go drain this. And as you can see, there's almost no water at all left in there. Put the beef packet, the chicken packet, sprinkle on some cheese, crack that egg, drop that egg right in there. Mash up that egg and start stirring this. I know it might seem weird to put a raw egg in here, but this soup is hot. It is going to pretty much cook that egg as you can already see white pieces of the egg like you just put it on the frying pan. Look at that. Big old chunks of egg are already cooked. Just setting it right on there. And look, this is a thick soup. It's not a liquid soup. 
<laughs> and cheesy. I'm gonna flatten it out, give it about three minutes to rest and expand. All right, now we're ready to see how thick and juicy it got. Look at that. Here we go. Oh yeah, that doesn't look like your mama's top ramen. It has absorbed all of the liquid and the egg is cooked. Now that's a soup. That's how I eat my soup. Cheesy. Oh my gosh. Let's do it. I don't even dirty another bowl. There's no reason. I'm just by myself. I bring my cat butt oven mitt. I put it right down there on the table and I make sure I get a hot dog in that first bite there. Throw it on the ground. I'm trying to read you guys from behind the lens. Like, what are they saying? What are they thinking? What are they nudging to their spouse? What are they saying about me right now? This is good. Until you've tried it exactly like I just showed you, you don't know what you're missing out of a top ramen soup. This is a pretty good meal for about 88 cents total, including the one hot dog, the egg, and the cheese part that I used. 88 cents. It's pretty good. Man, do it again. Stand by later after the sun goes down. I'm going to show you how to make movie theater tasting popcorn. I know I often boondock in parking lots and occasionally hit up RV parks and campgrounds because sometimes there is a practical need for it, but I can't find true happiness in a 200 square foot concrete RV pad. And those who know me best know my craving for travel and new experiences and excitement of finding new free campgrounds like this one. If this is free, and I have to pay to be side by side with other RVs to help park managers get rich. Give me free, give me freedom. On to other more fun stuff. Not green, by the way, I'm using the uh, white, white lights on top, right? All right, you guys know I love my popcorn. I've been loving my popcorn for a long time. I don't think I've actually shown you guys how I make either as good as movie theater popcorn or better than movie theater popcorn. And I wanted to share those ingredients and the process with you, again, real quick. Just buy Orville Redenbacher's movie theater microwavable popcorn. Don't, don't. In a pinch, fine, but no, I got a better way. Y'all want to impress someone who's only ever had microwavable popcorn? This is the secret and all of this is available on Amazon. Some of these ingredients are more important than others, but you don't need some fancy oil popping machine that stands up this tall like I used to have. Sometimes just something simple will work. This is great because it's cheap, 30 bucks. It's an oil popper, it's portable, it can go anywhere and it's low watts. And this will act as a bowl later as we flip it over. But ideally what you need is a popcorn maker that has this spinning rotating thing and holds and heats hot oil. That is the key. Which brings us to the second most important ingredient, the buttered flavored coconut oil. Now, depending on the season that you are cooking popcorn, this coconut oil is gonna look differently. Right now, it literally is a liquid I can just pour in, but most times in the winter, it's going to be a solid goop that you have to scoop in and, and break it apart and then beat it off. <laughs> That's what she said. Oh, Derek. And then it'll be all over the spoon and you'll have to get it off the spoon and get a paper towel and it'll be a solid more than a liquid. But right now I'm fortunate it's warm outside. My coconut oil is already a liquid. So we're going to put some in here and basically essentially what we're going to want to do is create a surface inside here that will completely cover one kernel. So about one kernel's thickness of oil on this. Clearly I need a little bit more. Let me wait for that to go around and kind of take a peek. Now I'm going to turn on my pot. Now, for most people in most seasons or with climate controlled RVs and homes, this will not look like this when you start. It'll look like this after about three minutes of having this on. And as you can see, it's going to start stirring. But still, I want to bring this up to temperature. So I'm going to give it about three minutes to get hot. All right, once that's nice and hot and juicy, you're gonna add your popcorn kernels. You could measure this out. I just know how much to use, about a half cup for this particular machine. And I don't even use a measuring cup. I just pour in about what I think is a half a cup. And a little bit over there, just like that. And you can see my layer was right because the, gre the oil is just about perfectly one kernel high. 
Now, the most important ingredient of all, what they use at the movie theaters, Flavacol brand gold medal seasoning salt. Do not use anything else, guys. You're gonna wanna use about two tablespoons of this. I, again, I just sprinkle the taste because I know what I like. Some people will want more, some people will want less than this. But that's about my system right there. Now we gotta let that go. We're gonna put the lid over it and we're gonna wait, start popping. Oh, I think I just, yep, yeah, here we go. Starting to pop. I might even take the lid off. Yeah, I forget. I think I do. I, I vent it because there's holes up here, but I put this lid back on when I'm eating the popcorn. So yeah, we'll leave that open to vent. If you could smell what this is cooking right now, guys. Oh, man, it's incredible. Ridiculous. Somebody's going to be cleaning the ground later. Woo! That smells like healthy. That smells real healthy. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I err on the side of caution turning it off too. I'll, I'd rather turn it off too soon than too late. So my thumb is right here at the off position down here, getting ready to turn it off. Right? Almost. Now, right there. That's good. Now I put the lid on. Make sure it's snapped on. Tip this whole thing upside down. The lid stays there. This pops off. Shake it to get the extra kernels down. And there's one last step that I like to do. Now, if you were to eat it just like this without doing the next step, this would still taste like movie theater popcorn without butter. But I put a lot of butter. In fact, if they give me a bucket of popcorn at the movie theater, I ask them to fill the bucket up half full and then spray butter in there, stir it, then put the rest in and then put more butter on. Then when they hand it to me, I take this over and I put more butter on top. This is what the movie theaters use. At the movies, butter flavored popcorn topping. There's better ways to do this, like there's a plunger version, like a, like a one gallon version of this. This ends up getting messy because it drips down the side when I use it. So I'm gonna put some butter in here, shake this up and then try it. You know it's good when you have to wipe your hands on napkin every single time you eat popcorn. Oh my gosh! Throw it on the lens! Throw it on the lens! Oh, you got, you got that Opie? Thank you. These ingredients aren't that expensive either. Just remember, the most important part is the Flavicol stuff. Also, when you pour salt at the movie theater, this is the salt that they're talking about that's in that metal tin that has the ball in it. This is what's out there. So after you had cooked with the Flavicol, you could also sprinkle on more Flavicol to taste, which is why I don't like to overdo it during the cooking process, because I might add more of this. Opie, you missed a couple kernels over there. Look, there's a kernel right there. Right there, go get that one. <laughs> What are we going to watch tonight? I'll probably watch some. been watching uh, Longmire. I'm on season three of Longmire. He's from Wyoming, and he drinks Rainier beer. I think I might do that tonight. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's good to see you. I guess you remember me. Yeah, it's good to see you up on your feet again. You know, don't rush it, though, boss. You got to rest up as much as you can. I also just want to mention, it's hard to capture Tara's character on camera because she's a very shy girl. Oftentimes she just runs when I pull the camera out or if there's anything going on, but sometimes on these quiet nights, and yes, I've got the green lights turned back on, Tara really comes out of her shell when it's just her and me. I mean, even like when Opie goes to bed and he's waiting in the bed, to, Tara will just turn into a complete snuggle bug and she'll show the belly. See. She shows the belly, she loves her belly rubs, and she is just the sweetest angel. And I feel like nobody in my life, even my mom, nobody gets to see this side of Tara except me. Or if I can sneak out my iPhone real quick and record it without her knowing. She doesn't even like seeing my phone, so I gotta be really sneaky when I cuddle with her. But she just loves sitting right next to me when we're watching movies. 
she's such a cuddle bug and she's such a sweetheart and she's an angel and uh, just wanted to share this little piece with you she can she can be sweet just so you know And a good peaceful morning to y'all. I slept pretty good last night. I tried to do the time lapse, but uh, unfortunately the skies didn't really cooperate. The moon washed everything out and then the clouds rolled in and now we are really cloudy with a 50% chance of rain as I leave here. I'm, I'm actually gonna be heading out today. Also, a lot of traffic last night. What you guys don't know is that when I do those 30 second long exposure shots, uh, if any cars drive by, it really is distracting. And uh, I counted from 11 p.m. till 5 a.m., nine cars drove past me. And so the types of shots that I removed are stuff like this, which just totally inter interferes with the whole mood of my shot when I'm trying to get something like this instead for the whole thing clear. So I did cut those shots out, and I often will do that if there's any interference. Just uh, wasn't a very pretty night as far as stars and what the moon was doing because the moon was stuck behind clouds. But anyways, it is what it is when I was editing last night I noticed something that you guys probably noticed earlier in the video, but I didn't catch it I didn't know and it was just a matter of time because pretty much every RV that I've purchased used has these snap on wheel simulators and when I lose one, which, I mean, the roads in Arkansas are very, very rough at times. I don't know when I lost this rear dually wheel simulator, but she gone. You got some options at this point. You can try to look on eBay or Marketplace and try to find one that's slightly similar, just one for anywhere between 50 and $70. Or you can buy a whole new four pack and the rears are different than the fronts. And on Amazon, those are right around $250. Or you can do what I do and just give up with the whole snap-on ones because it's just going to keep happening. As soon as I replace that one, the front driver's side is going to disappear. They're all going to disappear. You got to get the bolt-on ones where they basically you put on two adapters at 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock and those are the two that go on. And then the rest of them, like up here, if this were a bolt-on version, these two would twist right here. And these are all decoys. You guys can see the mosquitoes now too on the white RV. Yeah, we, we do have skeeters here at the lake and flies. Look at all the blood guts from all the... <laughs> See, I'm not worried about that. Later on, I will get my bolt-on ones. Also, it's funny that in the past couple months since I got the Bigfoot, I've had a lot of comments about the dent. Eric, when are you going to fix that dent? What's going on with that dent? People losing their mind over one little dent in my RV that's otherwise clean everywhere on the outside it's just so crazy that you guys don't miss anything i fixed the dent i fixed the dent i slapped on a wiley coyote sticker right there <laughs> and i love it and it's so cool i mean maybe later on i'll try to get somebody to pop that out it's easy to get to that side of the firewall it's not way down here but i <laughs> already getting smiles from people passing me on the left so all right, we're going to pack her all up, got the slide in, I got to put the footstool back in the Harley trailer, and then we're going to hit the road and head even farther north, try to escape the rain for my next video. You guys be well, hug your fuzzy butts really, really hard. Uh, it was difficult the other day, celebrating what would have been Jax's 14th birthday on the road. Uh, we're coming up, Tara's got a birthday next month, she'll be four, and then in August, Opie will be three. So, uh... Just remember, pets aren't around forever, so give them a big hug from Nomadic Fanatic and Opie and Terry. You guys have a good one. I'll see you in a few days.